You know what I really hate, Zoe? What's that, Carla? When you log on to a podcast, press play, and they put an advert on before it's even started. Oh, me too. They're so annoying, aren't they? Yeah. You know what one I heard the other day? Go on. You can get 10% off at www.badfishmerch if you put in promo code rerun at checkout. Oh, yeah, I heard that one as well. Oh, I quite like that one, actually. Oh, why do you like that one, then? I really like the stuff you can get on there. You can get T-shirts with all kinds of slogans or pictures on the front of whatever you want. And they do it in all different kinds of effects. So you can get leather effects or glow-in-the-dark. It's actually really cool. Oh, well, then we should definitely tell our listeners to head over and put rerun in as a promo code, I guess. Badfishmerch.com Oh, you know what we've just done, Zoe? What have we done? We've only put an advert in, in front of our podcast. Oh. Oh, we have as well, haven't we? Do you think they'll notice? No, move on, move on. Let's roll the titles. Hello, thank you for choosing to listen to Number One Rerun. We are Zoe and Carla, and each episode we get pop culture nostalgic after asking the listeners one simple question. Give us a date. That's right, and this week we are heading back to the 23rd of June, 1986. Let's go! Zoe. Hello Carla. So as we just said this episode we are heading back to the 23rd of June 1986 and this one is sent in by our good friend Susie who is also a fellow podcaster and she hosts the Casual Birder podcast which is all about looking at birds in a casual way. (laughs) I was going to say, are you going to say it's all about birds? Because, really. Yeah, but the twist is that she's casual about it. Yeah. I mean, we like casual, don't we? We don't want formal bird watching. No. If you want formal bird watching, Susie is not the one for you. No. She's casual about it. Yeah. She wears her slippers while she's doing it. (laughs) (laughs) She's in her comfies, her tracky bees. I'm not sure that's what Susie meant when she met, called it casual birder. No, I think she means, because she's a very modest lady, I think she means she's not an expert. But you know what? I think she is, because she knows a hell of a lot about bird people. Well, compared to you and I, she's a blooming genius. Yeah. PhD in birds compared to you and I. Yes. So um, we met Susie, because Susie kindly organised a podcast... Well, what, what was it? What were we, well, when I say we were doing, you left me to go up on stage while you sat at the back and just grinned at me in a inane fashion. No, it was a pitying fashion, <laughs> Carla. It was a grin as you have no idea how stupid you look right now type of grin. Yeah, it's okay because the audience was a certain kind of audience and they appreciated what, well, Let's be honest, they appreciated what Susie and Stacey were saying. I'm less convinced they appreciated your sense of humour. I don't think they got it, to be honest. I think they thought I was a bit rude. Yeah, I think they did. (laughs) But, you know, you are an acquired taste, so it's understandable. Yeah, sorry about that. If you did go to the podcast talk in Basingstoke put on by the casual birder, I apologise for bringing down the tone. I also think, Carla, it's um, probably not going to be the case that anyone actually picked up one of our leaflets and subscribed to our podcast as a result of your performance at that talk. So I don't imagine anyone listening to this was at that talk. Some people, a guy came all the way from the Isle of Wight to attend that. Yeah, not to see you, though. Well, I'd like to think it was. I think he was just too Mm. shy to say. (laughs) I don't know that you'd want to have someone who'd be willing to come all the way from the Isle of Wight. You'd have to keep an eye on him. Yeah. <laughs> so I did actually appear on the Casual Birder podcast. I did a little uh, little segment for Susie 
So if anyone is, is interested in hearing that, she basically asked me to do 10 minutes on what birds I could see out of my window. Now, bearing in mind, I live practically in Croydon. If you want to listen to me talking for 10 minutes about pigeons eating chips off the pavement. That's all you're going to have, isn't it? Pigeons. <laughs> Literally, it, the whole thing was me talking about pigeons. So if, if that floats your boat, if you fancy that, head on over to the Casual Bird episode entitled Camille in Elysian Park, Los Angeles. And put next to that, so that it's, it's somewhere in Los Angeles, and then it cuts to me hanging my head out of a flat in Croydon. <laughs> Probably a letdown. I don't know why she chose to use the Los Angeles part and not the Croydon part in the title, personally. But <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Susie's a very, very nice person, and we are she is honoured to be doing an episode for her, and such a special yeah. episode as well because this is the date that she met her husband. Not nice. I kind of want to know more, really, but it feels like prying. <laughs> But, you know, I like to understand how people have got together, you know, how their eyes met across a crowded room. We could have simply you know. asked her. I mean, we're in touch with her. We could have, to be fair. Seems a bit, you know. Okay. Well, Susie, it, after you're listening, we, we just didn't want to ask at the time. But if you want to uh, fill us in on the details. Or not. You're not obliged, Susie. Give us a lowdown on the deets. That'd be great. The deets. Yeah. The number one single in the UK... On this date was The Edge of Heaven by Wham. Oh, this makes me happy. What a song. Yeah. I don't even know if you're aware of this. My favourite Wham song. Oh, your favourite Wham song, not your favourite George Michael song. Oh, no, 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 no. We all know my favourite George Michael song is Careless Whisper, obviously. I think this could be... mm, Definitely could be up there with my Wham songs. Such a good song. And what... A final song it was. Imagine bowing out as this as your last single. Well, as luck would have it, Carla, why am I having a bit of a resurgence? Well, resurgence. I say resurgence in inverted commas with Andrew Ridgely's book. And uh, I know you've read it because you've lent it to me and I'm about halfway through it now as well. Yeah, share the love. Yeah. It's a lot, by the way, to carry on the train every day. Never carry a hardback on the train. That's my motto. I know, but... That's the only opportunity I really have to read. Mm. So, But I'm enjoying it on the train. It's a nice, light-hearted read. It's good fun. Yeah. I read a fantastic book. When George was still alive, actually. Well, first of all, George's autobiography I've read. But outside of that, I read, oh, what was their, their manager? He wrote uh, about his time managing Wham! And that is a great book. Is it? If I've still got it, you can borrow that too. Is it hardback? No. Okay. I'll have it then. Thanks. <laughs> that that because that is kind of um a bit a bit juicier. Not not in a nasty way. Yeah, it's interesting that because I've I'm not an avid biography stroke autobiography reader like you, so I don't read many of them. But I do find it interesting the way that Andrew Ridgely talks about well himself and mm-hmm. George George Michael or Yog, as he yep. called him, and also some of the photos in the book. I hadn't quite appreciated that George was not much of a looker when he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he definitely grew into his looks, didn't he? Yeah, I think, you know what it was? He needed uh, just a bit of styling and a bit of self-confidence. Yes, needed a bit of swag, didn't he? Yeah. And arguably, a lot of people, you know, mock Andrew Ridgely and it's he's, he's an easy target because obviously he didn't quite write as many songs as George and he didn't sing. But he, he gave him that confidence. He would never have been a pop star without him. No, but you're saying this because Andrew Ridgely says this in the book, or do you actually think that's true? No, I've said that based on, as you know, I love George. Huge fan of George. Yeah. Many interviews of George when he said that, and also George's autobiography that he wrote right. himself says the same thing. All right, then. Fair dues. I, I mean, I think it was also Shirley was a big part of it as well that he had his two best mates permanently there with him. Good old show. 
Yeah, we love Pepsi and Shirley, don't we? Yeah. So, guess what I've got in my hands right now? This could be a new segment. Oh, God, this is, I mean, is this a road we want to go down? <laughs> um. I am holding the Edge of Heaven single. On vinyl? On vinyl. Oh, but you haven't got anything to play it on, Carla. I have. Oh, have you? Have you never noticed my record player? No, not at all. You've never noticed anything in my house. You swear I haven't got any box sets. Now you haven't even noticed my record player. Where do you keep all these things? Your house is like a TARDIS. It's a special single, this one, because it's a gatefold double single. So it was a double A, but it had two seven inches in it. That's very, very rare. Like a double A would normally be A and then AA. This says A, B, C, D. You know you're doing well when you've got two seven inches in it. I know. I'll put a picture of it on Instagram, but you open it up. Lovely gatefold picture. Oh, and there's George looking handsome as ever. And Andrew's there. (laughs) Poor Andrew. Little message from him. (laughs) It says, we would like to thank everyone who has helped us come through the last four years with our careers, our sanity and our friendship intact. Special thanks as always go to our families, our close friends and of course to Siobhan, George Michael and Andrew Ridgely. (laughs) And Siobhan. Yeah. Oh, there's a story there, isn't there? I'm like, she ain't mentioned, is she, in the old uh, autobiography? I didn't hear Siobhan no. mentioned. Who is she? We just don't know. When you say things like, and of course, Siobhan, you know. Yeah. Saying something, isn't it? It is, isn't it? I mean, I don't know what it's saying, but it's saying something. And then on the back, as if as if that thanks you wasn't enough, on the back it says, uh, it's got the track list in, and then it says, special thanks to Elton for the edge of heaven. So, can I enlighten you about Elton's role? Please do. He played piano on the track. How interesting. It's not really, is it? No. Do you think there's any other band in history that has ended on such a high as Wham? I don't know if there is, Carla, but they knew when to bow out, didn't they? That's the difference. I just love that. Like, it makes me sad we haven't got more more music, but in the same way that, you know, certain TV shows knew when to bow out. It's just something the British tend to do quite well. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Now, was this Andrew's doing? Because I haven't finished the book, obviously, but that's where I think he's heading. According to Andrew, it's completely mutual. Hmm. I don't know. George went on to have the, the massive career. So I think, I think Andrew might have wanted to go on a little bit longer than they did but this is all just uh what's the word conjecture uh, conjecture good word though well done thank you you're always surprised whenever i say anything remotely intelligent aren't you well if it has more than two syllables i'm impressed i know i know uh so yeah i think um well, you'll get to it in the book. I don't want to spoil it. I think George needed to spread his wings. I mean, he'd already had he'd already had yeah. Careless Whisper and a different corner as solo hit whilst he was still with Wham. It it yeah. was inevitable. And how nice is it that they went out still mates? Yeah. Well, when I've seen Andrew uh, be interviewed, he said the last time he saw George was they were playing Scrabble. And I just thought, how wonderful. Yeah, I bet you did. I bet you were like, I wish I could get in on that game. I'd love to have played Scrabble with George Michael. I, I somehow feel like you wouldn't have been a good competitor. Yeah, but I just said conjecture, so. Yeah. I am pretty good at Scrabble, actually, I'll have you know. I don't have the patience for it. Do you know what I mean, though? Like, it's not a game, is it? It's like Countdown. I don't have the patience for that either. I like watching it, but I don't need to participate. It's no fun if I have to, you know, if I have to overuse my brain. That's not a game, is it? Um. No, Carla is the answer. No, absolutely not. But I personally, I'm one of those people that's got the Scrabble app, so I will play Scrabble on my phone. Mm, I couldn't think of anything worse. I like Scrabble. Okay. Yeah, that's my thing, that is. So, anything else you would like to add about this wondrous, wondrous song, The Edge of Heaven? The thing I would say is that Wham! always makes me think of my university days. 
I happened to make friends at university with people who were also Wham fans. So any of like student nights that we went to where they played Wham songs, we'd be like losing our minds dancing along to Wham. And when I moved to uh, France to do my two years out, my friends bought me Wham the final uh, as my leaving present. That's nice. Yeah. And now people have learnt something about you, that you went to France for two years. People probably didn't know that, Zoe. You're just a closed book. Oh, I do. So, well, we've got an issue with this, haven't we? So normally we go on and talk about the number one film in the USA at this point, which we will briefly, but we've already covered it because the number one film yeah. in America at this time was Karate Kid 2. And if you think that we had nothing to say the first time, think again. Imagine having to talk about it twice. Yeah. So this was, let me just refer to our little spreadsheet, Carla, that you mock. Zoe does a lovely spreadsheet for us of everything we've ever talked about. Yeah. This was our episode for the 12th of July, 1986. And it was the one that we published in May of this year. Okay. So this was only, what, three weeks later? Or three weeks earlier, rather. Uh, it was a popular film, so I understand why it would have been... Uh, at number one for a few weeks. I might be wrong, but I think this like was actually bigger than the first one. I'm not saying it was better, because I have no doubt it wasn't as good as the first one, but I think, like, box office-wise, it did better than the first one, because I guess maybe they'd be more aware of what, what was happening. This must have been, like, the big boom of videos and everything around this time, so people would have been really excited by the first one. Okay, if you say so. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just... I, I, I seem to remember that snippet of information. Is this conjecture again, Carla? <laughs> it's more conjecture. This episode's riddled with conjecture. It really is. It must be because Susie's intelligent and she is somehow sending me messages. Or you're just trying to live up to Susie's expectation, knowing that you're going to fall short. I'm never going to live up to Susie's expectation. No. None of us are. No, well, I do. Don't know. You didn't see the way she looked at you. I think she thought you were a peasant. <laughs> <laughs> and I, for one, don't blame her. Listen, Susie's a nice person. She would never think of me that way. She probably wouldn't. No, she... She's not mean and vindictive like you and I. No, we're horrible, aren't we? Yeah. So do you have anything to say about the Karate Kid? Can we just refer people to that episode before and ask them to go back to that if they really want to hear what we think about it? But we didn't even say anything too. in that one, did we? So what are you expecting me to drum up this time round then if I didn't have something the first time? What I was going to say was, didn't they remake The Karate Kid with Will Smith's son in it? Yeah, seen that one. Oh, have you? Yeah, I haven't seen the um, seen the originals, not properly. Oh. Why would you have watched that? You don't even like Will Smith, let alone Will Smith's offspring. I, don't, I, I, I dislike Will Smith's offspring even though I dislike Will Smith. <laughs> I don't dislike Will Smith, that's unfair. I just think he's a bit too much. The thing is, I don't know if the world needed another Karate Kid and certainly not one with Will, Will Smith's son in it. I think that's the problem. No, but who would you have had? I don't really know any child actors. I mean, like, the only child actors I can think of are now no longer child actors, like Macaulay Culkin. He'd be no good as a Karate Kid because he's, like, 40. <laughs> what child actors are there nowadays? Again, I was going to say that kid that was in War of the Worlds, but she's probably about 30 now. I'm Googling Child Actors 2019. Oh, the kid that was in Room. All of the kids in Stranger Things. That, that girl gets a lot of credit, doesn't she, from Stranger Things. She's everywhere. Maybe Bobby Brown. Oh, she irritates me too. I mean, basically, I don't like any precocious child actor. No, fair. So what would you have been watching on telly on this day? Oh, Carla, I would definitely have been watching this go on then it's the flumps the flumps did you watch the flumps i think everyone watched the flumps didn't they do you remember the theme tune to the flumps not enough to sing it but oh. i feel that you might it went da 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 something like that it sounds great 
Yeah. Oh, I loved that program. That I think that might have been my favourite children's program to the point where I saw it on um, DVD. It might have even been video in my adult life and I bought it and watched it again because I loved it so much. And you know that's abnormal for me. That's something you don't do. No. I mean, I know you don't own a DVD player now because you're ridiculous, but even when you did own a DVD player, you weren't the one to buy DVDs. That's crazy. No, but I did love the flumps. So basically, the flumps were a family of, I don't know how to explain to you, but they were like round little people. Yeah. And one of them wore a beanie hat. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, One of them was a granddad that played the trumpet. Yeah. He was great. Uh, And then there was Posey and Perkin with the kids. And there was a little one, wasn't there? Yeah, I can't remember what little one's name was. Poodle, Poodle, Poodle. Poodle, Poodle. Yeah, Poodle. I think this was a 70s show and this was a rerun. Yeah, it was a 70s show. But it was a 70s show before we were even born. It finished. That can't be right. There were only ever 13 episodes of The Flumps, and it only ran from February to May 77. It was definitely rerun a lot. For 11 years, apparently. So for 11 years, we were watching the same 10 episodes or something. To be fair, Carla, at the point when it stopped showing it, we were only 10, so that would have been quite impressive if we'd have appreciated that. Were they? What were they, though? Flumps. No, I know that, but like, what were Flumps? Because they kind of just look like, I don't know, like furry potatoes. Like, were they supposed to be something? Oh, yeah, flumps. I can see I'm going to get no sense out of you. <laughs> don't question it. Okay. I didn't know, you know, like the munch bunch, they were fruit. It's difficult to say. You could ask that question about many things. Okay. I won't question the flumps again. So I didn't realise it was a sensitive issue for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is. Okay, well, I, I like the flumps too. Obviously, not as much as you. I mean, this does them a disservice. This website I found said they look like fur balls. Mm. That's not fair. They do a little bit, though. I had enough cats growing up to see a lot of fur ball. Anyway, it was a fantastic show. So, this is a, an interesting coincidence, actually. It kind of ties in with what uh, you're talking about. So, whilst you were watching that, I would have been sat at home watching. Wacky races. But I don't normally do any research for the show, but I did have a quick look up of Wacky Races just because, again, I thought this isn't an 80s show. This must be a, a rerun. Then it was. It's actually a, a 60s show. So I didn't realise it was that old, but it was actually made in the 60s. But it only lasted for one season. Oh, my God. What a coincidence. And Wacky Races, to me, just seemed endless. Yeah. Just like it was always on, you know, whenever there was a 15 minute slot, it, I think it was even on during like the Saturday morning shows. I think going live even like cut to wacky races every now and then or something. It just seemed like it was always on telly. But actually, hmm. there was only ever one season made in 1968. Wow. Bit more, but only 17 episodes. Goodness me. Who knew? Well, not us, clearly. Do you remember the characters in Wacky Races? Well, I remember the main ones Mm -hmm. because I used to get called Muttley because of the way I laughed. So did my dad because he laughed like Muttley. I was okay with it. Yeah, that's all right. Muttley was a great character. Yeah, it was. Dastardly uh, Penelope Pitstop. She was always my favourite. There was that caveman one, wasn't there? Wasn't there um, a hillbilly? Can you say that? Is that offensive? Can you call, Can you say hillbilly? I don't know. I don't know. That's an offensive word now. If it is, I apologise, but I don't know how else to describe him. I'm trying to find a list of characters. Oh, okay. I think there was like a, a mob or something like that. Oh, yeah, there was. But they were tiny, very small men, but like all went around in a mob together. Sergeant Blast. Don't know who that is. Sergeant Blast. I don't know if I remember that one. Hmm. Oh, wasn't there, um, oh God, what was his name? It rhymed. Or, and uh, he was like a suave geezer. Oh, I remember him, Professor Pat Pending. Uh, the Gruesome Twosome in the, cre- in the Creepy Coupe. I don't know if I remember them. I don't remember them. 
Sergeant Blast and Private Meekly. Okay. This is who you're talking about. The Ant Hill mob in the bulletproof bomb. They all had their little legs did the car. Yeah, that was it. They used to make me laugh. I like them. You missed my action of my fingers moving like little legs. Oh, if only we had a YouTube channel. Yeah. People have been crying out for it. I've said no. <laughs> yeah, I know. We just get too big. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm nearly there. Rufus, Rough Cut and Sawtooth. The Red Max, he was like a... Um, like a daredevil, I think. Okay, yeah. And Peter Perfect. That's it. That's who I was trying to think of when I said the guy that's name rhymed. Doesn't rhyme, but kind of Peter Perfect. Yeah, that was him. Anyway, that's them all. It was a great show. It was just really funny. So here's a question, Carla. Who won the race? Was there like an overall winner of the whole thing? Oh, I don't know. This is one of the rare shows that I genuinely don't think I've seen since I was a child. Oh, well, worth revisiting then. Definitely. I'll be looking out for the DVD of that. My last experience around this was it used to be a ride in Universal Studios. Oh, really? Well, they had a Hanna-Barbera oh, ride, okay. and this was part of Hanna-Barbera. So it's now Despicable Me. But you basically, you got in this, like car thing and you went off with the Flintstones and then the Jetsons took over and you were flying with them and then you were in wacky races. Ah, uh, great days, great days. But kids nowadays probably wouldn't, wouldn't know those characters no. were, so they've had to take them out and pop some minions in there. Yeah, well, that's what the kids want nowadays, isn't it? Yeah, but it, I, I'm glad that I got to go on it. It was a lot of fun. Oh, good. So if someone wants to be like Susie, I don't mean bird spotting, but if they, oh, oh, well, obviously, if you want to do that, do it. But I mean, in terms of getting an episode dedicated to them, how would they go about that, Zoe? Oh, that was a very long-winded way of getting to the getting to the point of the story, wasn't it? Well, so was that what you just <laughs> no, replied? That's fair. That's totally fair. Well, that's irony. Absolutely. So, Carla, if they want to submit a date. A date between 1978 and the present day, then they can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at number one rerun. We are also the proud creators of Britpod Scene, which is collected for British podcasts. If you head over to Britpod Scene on Twitter, all of the shows we retweet are the shows that we endorse. And of course, Susie is one of the members of Britpod Scene and a very valued member she is too. She's a very active member of Britpod Scene, isn't she? Yeah. So what people don't know is behind the scenes, all the Britpod Sceners kind of talk on this thing called Slack, which is a social media app, which I didn't know about till I was taught. And Susie is a, a great participant of that and very, very helpful to others. I like the fact you're calling yourself Britpod Sceners. Yeah. Mm, I don't think it works. Well, then you can't be in the gang, Zoe, so... That will teach you. Anyway, thank you very, very much to Susie and her lovely husband, who we met. Do you remember? He was a very nice man as well, wasn't he? Oh, he was a very nice man. Yeah, very nice man. And thank you for listening, and we will see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye. Number One Rerun Podcast is part of Britpod Scene, an independent network of uniquely British podcasts that's always growing. Check out BritPodScene.com or follow BritPodScene on Twitter to find out more. Oh.